guys, Dan with Kane Custom Garage, and today I want to pose the question, is the XL12 chainsaw the best firewood saw ever made? I mean, I would argue that, uh, yeah, maybe it is, maybe it was the best chainsaw back in the day. You know, after doing this for 10 years, collecting chainsaws and working on these old chainsaws, you know, you see a lot of these out there for sale at yard sales and stuff. But yeah, it just seems like this was like one of the most popular and durable, dependable chainsaws that uh, has ever been made. And maybe it's because of the simplicity of it. I mean, they never had anti-vibe, never really had chain breaks until like the end of the run. I guess there's a few that actually had chain breaks. But yeah, just a simple, rugged design. And so I thought, shoot, let's take a look and uh, see what makes them such a good chainsaw. What's what's so cool about them? And I've got a few examples here. The rear end didn't sound good in that truck. <laughs> but anyways, they made these chainsaws from like... Uh... Oh man, sounds like the rear end locked up on him. That don't sound good. But anyways... So yeah, so they made these things from like 64 to 1988, like officially on the on the uh, website, the Acres Internet Chainsaw Collectors website. But I've I've read some articles that said that they were making them clear up into the like 90s, like 90. I think 1995 was the last year they made the Super XL12. So yeah, they had many variations of the saw over the years. This is a later one. Here's one of the first ones. I'll show you the differences a little later, but yeah, so here's an early one, a little bit later one, and then they made the Super XLs. So yeah, just a great old saw, rugged old saw, lots of parts out there, made in America. And I did that uh, video earlier with the uh, Steel 031 chainsaw. And I sort of posed the same question about that one. Was that one of the best firewood saws back in the day? And I mean, in some ways, maybe because it was anti-vibe and these aren't. But I'm, I'm thinking, I'm guessing that the, I tried to find some pricing, but I couldn't really find any good pricing on what these were new compared to like the steel chainsaw or even the uh, McCulloch chainsaw, which would be the 1010. So if any of you guys remember what these things sold for back in the day, it'd be sort of interesting to know. Because I'm guessing that this was probably cheaper than the steel saw. And maybe, che probably cheaper than the McCulloch, I'm guessing. And so yeah, I mean for, for the money, and how many were sold out there, and how many are still operating today, I mean these things were just indestructible. I mean I don't think I've ever gotten into the motor on one of these, maybe one of them. One of the red ones that my dad got me was the piston was actually scored in it, so I had to fix that. But I mean, if these things, if they turn over and uh, it's got good compression, it's going to run because it just needs, you know, tune-up parts, basically. And you can even get rid of the points and uh, put a chip in them. And then, yeah, they basically just need a carb kit and clean up and they'll run forever. So, yeah. So I got a few examples of them, so let's take a look at them and uh, see how they progressed over the years. Okay, here's an early one, guys. Probably one of the first ones out, early 60s. 63, 64, something like that. And so yeah, see the early ones just had the straight stack muffler, and man, them frickin' things are loud. And then yeah, the early ones had the different knobs that have these bumps on them like that same thing with the fuel cap so that's how you can tell they're the older ones this one's got some different colored parts on it and you see that a lot on these because uh you know they just keep robbing other ones to keep these things going and so yeah you'll see them with like multicolor parts and pieces on them so somebody put some red stuff off a later model one to keep this guy going. And these ones are manual oiler only. No automatic on these. Yeah, that thing looks like it's been through the battle, been through the war, but she still runs. 
and I cleaned up the bar and chain on it. Gave it a little love. So yeah, see the regular XL12s, the oiler is, or the oil fill is down here in the back. And then see, you can see the, you can see the oil um, pump lines. That's one, another thing that's sort of cool about these, they have these copper oil pump lines. Sort of fun to clean up and polish. On off switch, manual oiler, and all these early ones. The air filter cover is metal, which is nice. The later model ones, this top cover is plastic and it always breaks. But you can replace it with an older metal one, it'll go right on there. And this is the cheapo. You can buy these aftermarket air filters for these. And this is the crappy one. That's It's just rubber and floppy and flimsy. This is a piece of crap. The good ones are the original ones that have the copper tabs. And they're nice and stiff. I'll show you one here later. So see, here's one of the original air cleaners, guys. Nice and stiff. Fits nice. Has the, I guess it's, it's not copper. I said copper, but it's a brass. Has a nice brass clip that you can just grab and take off. But yeah, easy to work on. There's the carburetor right there. So yeah, if you can find a good original I don't even know if you can buy these original type ones, new. I mean, you might be able to find some NOS ones. But yeah, a lot better than the those cheapo rubber junk. So anyways, that's the original type. So yeah, there's an early XL12. I'll fire it up for you real quick. So yeah, plug your ears. These ones are loud. I already warmed it up. <laughs> it literally makes your ears tingle. Here's another early XL12, guys. I forgot I had. Straight out of the wild. Hasn't been cleaned or fired up yet. That one has the straight stack muffler. Yeah, see the knobs. It has the old knobs. So yeah, that's an early 60s one. Does this one have the serial number? Yeah. So yeah, like I was saying, you can decode the... Um, serial number on these things and get the year. I can't remember. There's a paper that tells you how to do it if you go online. But yeah, that one will clean up nice. It's even got the graphics on the bar still. That one's probably got some low mileage on it. But yeah, these are what they, typically what you find in the wild at yard sales and state sales. You can usually pick them up you know, a few years ago you could get them for 20 or 30 bucks, but now they're probably pushing, you know, if you find a non-runner or even a runner, maybe 50, 100 bucks. So anyways, there's another early one. And then here's a later one, a later XL12. See how it has the hexagon shaped knobs? I don't let this one fool you guys. It has a clutch cover that says Super XL but it's not a Super XL somebody put that on there because it's the same clutch cover but um, you can tell that it's not a Super because the oil fill isn't right here it's on the Super there's an oil fill thing right here and like the tank and everything's a little bit longer it seems like we'll look at one but yeah see the oil fills back here so it's an XL12 it's not a Super XL But yeah, it's a nice clean one that I've had for a while. She runs good. 20-inch bar. I think they look the best with the 20-inch bar, and they run a 20-inch bar fine. 24 is probably pushing it, maybe. But it, 24 looks cool on the one I have. And so here's an even later model, XL12. And see, now the serial number's on the side. It's just a sticker. So this one's probably getting into the late 70s, early 80s maybe. 
Still an XL12 because it's got the oil filler in the back. But yeah, this one's even got a little bit of graphics still on the bar. This one cleaned up nice. My dad found this one for me. The piston was scored in it, so I robbed a piston and cylinder off of a part saw. But the graphics are really nice on this one. So yeah, I think they switched to red in the later years. Not exactly sure which year. Maybe one of you guys can tell me. So yeah, that's a good looking saw. Runs good too. And they had a lot of different mufflers on these, like the straight stacks, and then they had these that were sort of a black, I don't want to say powder coated, but I don't know what the finish is, but the black, that's factory. I cleaned it up and it still looks pretty good. And then they had chrome plated mufflers. Maybe that was on the uh, blue ones, the earlier ones, hard to say. Yeah, good looking in red too. And then we move on to the Super XL Automatics. And these are 58 cc's, a little bit bigger. You can see the oil fills up front here. That's how you can tell it's a Super. And this screw is for the uh, automatic oiler. There's a spring and a plunger in there. So yeah, that's what that's all about. I stripped the paint off the uh, clutch cover. Sort of the road warrior look. This one was pretty rough, the paint, so I was going for more like the uh, Mad Max look. Home light, Super XL, automatic. Got some aftermarket bucking spike. You can get a little bit bucking, a little bit bigger bucking spike off of eBay at that cheap chainsaw parts guy. He's in Arlington, Washington. And then this one has a big 24 inch bar on it just because I had it laying around, so I threw it on there. And it was so heavy I had to make a little kickstand <laughs> so it doesn't flop down on the chain. But hey, it works. Looks mean. So yeah, the Super XL12, they had muffler guards. And then they had like an accessory muffler guard. I think I got one over here that has that. What did I do with that? I'll show you. And then here's the uh, throttle lock. And then here's another Super XL automatic, guys. The later model one. Now they switch to red. See the oil fills up in the front. And then they then they even went to a later model gas cap. That's what a lot of the late model home light chainsaws, they all had these. Some of them were red. And then I don't think I have one. In fact, this one might have, but the really late model red ones, the top cover was plastic. And it's always broke on those. And so I switched it to the metal one. Have I got one of those plastic ones around here? Let me look. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. This is one, one that I haven't touched yet. From the wild. A Super XL. And this is a really late model one because, yeah, see, it has the plastic top cover. And it's actually not broke, which is amazing. And the graphic looks pretty good on it, so I'll probably just clean that up. Oh, and it's got the crappy air filter. Oh, I was going to show you that the good air filter. That's just a crappy aftermarket one. Wow, and this one has a hand guard. Ooh, safety advanced. It's not a no no chain break. I guess they did some of the really late ones. They actually came out with a chain break for, and I guess it's sort of rare. So if you got one, it's sort of a rare item because yeah, they didn't have chain breaks generally. And uh, yeah, no anti vibe ever on these. So that's one thing that Steel had over them on with the O three one. Their saw was anti vibe. So yeah, that one's straight out the wild. Still has some decent, well, maybe those graphics would clean up. Straight out the wild, XL12 automatic. And then see, there's another different muffler. Oh, and then I was gonna show you the other accessory muffler guard. Yeah, this is that muffler guard I was telling you about. Sort of cool. I think that was like an accessory you could buy, I'm not sure. Maybe it came with it. Hell, I don't know. 
Yeah, they made them for a lot of years. And there's another bucking spike I found on eBay from that same place, cheap chainsaw parts. Powder coated black, that looks sorta of cool. And the other nice thing about the XL12s is there's still a lot of parts out there for them. This can was just sorta of cool. But yeah, like you can still find NOS sprockets and clutch drums and you can even find cylinders. There's lots of aftermarket stuff too. So yeah, plenty of part saws on eBay. And then here's that bar I found at the thrift shop and I cleaned all the rust off of it and redid the, redid the graphics in that one video. And so I was going to ask you guys, hold on. So yeah, I was going to ask you guys, which saw, which one of these saws should I put this really nice home light sprocket nose bar on? Maybe one of the red ones, maybe that late model red one, or maybe one of the blue ones. Nah, not that one. I like the 24 inch bar on that one. Probably not that old one. It's too nice for that. Maybe that red one or that red one. Yeah, it'd look cool on that. Maybe on that one. But yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think. Which one should I put it on? Here's a Super XL12 that I fixed up from my buddy Doug. He takes it out every year to get firewood. He brings it to me once in a while to give her a tune-up. Yeah, that was just a, another old junker I found at a yard sale and got it running. Painted it Desert Storm Tan, put that cool sticker on it. But yeah, it just keeps on running. I mean, none of these saws, except for the one, none of them I've actually had to dig into the motor on, really. I mean, it's mostly just external stuff, you know, points, ignition. You can put a chip in them if you want. Um, carb kit, and just clean them really well, and they'll run forever. That's mainly why a lot of them get shelved, is because the carb... The carb diaphragms get too stiff and it won't run and then yeah there it sits and so a lot of them don't really have a lot of hours on them here's three straight out of the wild this is how you'd find them guys yard sales craigslist estate sales if you spot one grab it because most likely it'll run i don't even try to start them i just buy them usually you can get them cheap 50 bucks, 30 bucks, sometimes $20 if you're lucky. But yeah, a lot of them, they're like, oh, this has been sitting in my garage for 30 years. And yeah, most of them, they're like, I don't even know if it runs. But you know they will. I mean, unless it's been like thoroughly abused, you know that it's just gonna need a carb kit and a tune up and it's gonna run. So yeah, that's the other nice thing about them. There's still tons of them out there. And I know some guys are like, well, I never found one, but I think it, I think it might depend on which part of the country you're from too. I seem to find a lot of them around here, but I don't know what other parts of the country it's like. So yeah, there's a early XL12 like we saw, a little bit later XL12, and then a, and then a fairly late Super XL12 with the plastic cover. And a handguard even. So yeah, find them in the wild. If you can get it cheap, buy it. Okay, let's do a little cut and test with them. Here's a regular XL12. Let's see how she does. Super XL12, 24 inch bar on this one, a little overkill, but
tell the super has a little more grunt to it runs that 24 inch bar all right i suppose if you had it buried she might struggle a little bit but it looks badass okay let's go back in the shop guys that's about it wraps are all up let me know what you think in the comments was the xl12 chainsaw one of the best chainsaws ever made best firewood saw back in the day let me know what you think and be sure to watch my other videos on here i've got a whole crap load of them <laughs> that i've made i've pretty much cataloged every chainsaw that i have in here I think I have like over 450 videos, something like that. So anyways, check them out and we'll catch you on the next one.